Oh, I think I'm recording. Yep. Didn't make a beat, though. Anyway. Um, okay. So I'm going to talk about free will, but I'm not sure. We'll see if we make enough bits out of this video to make a free will video, but I'm thinking more in terms of the the anti-words to these words. Like, these words don't aren't any good, like freedom, justice, uh, the concept of forward or, or productive human behavior, good. The idea that there is no real good, there's just level <laughs> degrees of bad. There's doing things the wrong way, um, exquisitely, the perfectly wrong way, you know, with very little wrongness in it. And there, that's good. Uh, yeah, that there, you know, all these notions, these conventional pop culture notions of reality are nonsense words. You know, there is, there's no freedom without the potential of a restraint. And it's the, the elimination of the restraint or the prevention of the restraint that is the freedom, uh, provides the freedom. But there is nothing without the negative first, justice. Again, there's nothing without the potential for the crime, uh, without the prevention of the crime. Uh, there can be nothing called justice. <laughs> you know, so it's always this, this negative that needs to exist first. So it sort of goes back to my argument that the universe itself doesn't need anything. We have to create the need first. We have to create the problem, the mess, before we can show up to fix it. That this is all that the brain is for, is fixing. Uh, so the only use intelligence has is you have to make a problem for it to solve. It's a, it resolves. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, um, it doesn't create a good. It undoes a bad, it prevents a bad. Uh, so again, we're back to that argument. Um, you know, some people take this to an extreme, so that brings up the modern mystic and the other nihilist types, um, where, uh, yeah, I don't even know how quite exactly how they do that, but I mean this whole negation of, uh, what is a conventional notion, and they, neg they negate the very, um, existence of harm, um, I still don't know how they do it. I still can't understand the the how how it's undone <laughs> beyond the fact that they just say go away. <laughs> you know, I don't see how they undo it, how they unmake it, how they uncreate it. Uh, but they have claimed to successfully accomplish that task. Um, but yeah, I don't see the white space here um, that cr provides for this, this re-contextualization of the reality into something that, uh, nothing to see here, nothing to worry about. Um, no harm done. No real harm done. Uh, it's all, it's, it's, it's all an image of harm, like a video game. Uh, you know, like this game has no reality. And so a, a video game has double no reality, right? Because we, we already concede that the characters in a video game uh, are not real stakeholders. And uh, somehow they've made us not real stakeholders. And so that would make a video game a double nothing. So that might be a, that might be a problematic in terms of explaining how, uh, you know, we can be nothing when relative to a video game we're obviously something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to undo that one, I think. Um, it's these layers of the matrix. Inside the matrix, inside the matrix. Infinite regression, all that kind of uh, problem created there. So anyway, it seems like those are two different subjects, so I, I won't try to blend them. Uh, and stick more with this, this idea, uh, unfortunately, that these negative forces are the real forces, and that there are no real positive forces, there's just elimination of negative. Uh, you have justice when you prevent uh, the crime. That's the best justice, is prevention. Um, and that could get back to the, the nadling argument. 
that the best um, solution to the problem of life is not to make one, <laughs> you know, not to cause it, not to create it, not to make it, uh, because if it's if it's done as, as best it can do, it will um, not make a, a, a not leave more mess behind. Um, and certainly in the context of this, I've said this before, but I like it's worth repeating. You know, the only way we can really make ourselves productive in this world is to clean up the messes made by other people, made by nature itself even. Uh, you know, you rescue poor kitty, you know, a little kitty on a rock, let's say here. I could rescue it, save it harm, suffering, anguish, worry, fret. And I have done some good. And I could go through my life trying to do those good things, create a nice little basket of prevented harm, and uh, got through my life being productive. Even if I personally experienced some harms and ended up on a rock now and then myself, uh, fretting and worrying, uh, you know, the, the unbalance I would have surely, surely profited. Uh, the world would have profited from my existence uh, because I prevented more of that stuff than I personally experienced or personally caused. Uh, so this is a, an argument that you know, the certain group of people don't like this basic mathematics to existence. Uh, that there's these negative conditions that exist and uh, you gain um, positive performance points, uh, productivity in your life, by uh, eliminating these threats, these nasty bits, preventing them, uh, mitigating against them, reducing them. Uh, and that's all the, the game we have. There's no really, there's no other way to draw to earn points is then to resolve the problems, the negatives of existence. And that's where I argue that, uh, you know, the mechanism of our desire is uh, another one of these, it's not, the, it's not a positive force as much as we feel it as a positive force. It's really the fact that it's creating the negative of need. It's making where we are not good enough and compelling us <laughs> to move or migrate or do to resolve the ungood enoughness, the boredom or tedium or, uh, you know, undoneness or, uh, you know, just it, it, the hunger. And that, that hunger, as much as we sense it as a an attraction that's really made out of uh, a very negative, uh, very um, um, destroying of the current, the present, the what you have situation. So, and this kind of happens to us, you know, you know, we do resolve a problem, you know, you win the lottery, and somehow you wake up the next day and still have problems. <laughs> yeah, somehow they... They show up, you know, no matter where you you run, you can't hide, uh, you know, from these compulsions, these ambitions. Uh, your, you know, as, as you resolve the bigger problems in your environment, the ones that are just glaring, your eyesight will start seeing the detail. So, you know, once you get the water to the right level, then you'll start worrying about how much algae's in it, or how uneven the rocks are, or some other detail will consume your interest and compel you to do something to resolve it. Uh, so that's not good. <laughs> yeah, it's just no good news here uh, in terms of what our psychology is doing uh, and how we're being played. Uh, you know, by the molecule, which gets back to the, the free will argument. Um, I guess it's almost so, it's almost so impossible a notion for me to 
perceive as having any validity. I think it's hard to argue it to a point. Uh, it seems um, like there's no options um, to see it any other way than how you're controlled by experience, by uh, nature, you know, provides you with a physical body of limitations and, and nuance. Uh, your life experience beats on that a little, and it creates your psychology. We certainly that's well documented, how events of trauma and, and uh, nuance, uh, you know, end up having you all kinds of uh, fucked up echoes in your psychology based on those events of how comfortable you were or uncomfortable you were in situations and how that conformed and created your taste in uh, the world, what you uh, find pleasurable and repulsive. And then when you get to your thinking mind, it's even more obvious how important how you doing? Uh, experiences, because your experiences will uh, become, oh, it's critical to know the mathematics. You have to understand the relationships and the formulas and all of this information that has to come in for you to perform the function. So you have to know how to do it. You have to have experience doing it. Uh, you know, you can certainly figure things out as you go. Uh, I've done a lot of that in my life where, yeah, somebody just throws the problem in front of me and I try to figure out how to do it. And you can, you can do that, but understand that that's another um, process that requires, your, your creativity requires, it has to be fertilized by mechanical senses, uh, by knowledge that's built into your, just how you lived your life, you acquired understanding of the physics and how much torque you can put on something or some other feel to it. So if you're living by feeling or intuition, that is all developed through your experience. It's all refined and confined. Yeah, refined and confined. So that's again another reason to understand how this subject is not about freedom. Uh, freedom does, uh, I mean, knowledge does, confine, uh, so the, the, you know, the, the will, freedom, is not a good will, a free or liberated will, it's not a refined will, and, uh, the refined will is going to be a confined will, it's going to be a will that has, uh, filtered out the garbage and the nonsense and the bullshit, uh, it doesn't, it isn't allowed to be um, poorly motivated or inefficiently or accept inefficiency in its behavior. So the will is going to be incredibly restrained and limited. So that's the irony of the, well, I've said this before, <laughs> so it was a more redundancy. Um, but yeah, the better your will the less free it is. Uh, the better you are as a person, the less free your will can be. Uh, because the, the truth will own you. <laughs> the truth is not liberating. The truth is confining. Uh, it's just obvious. So the more consistent your will is with the facts of reality, uh, the less free uh, to tread in random directions or sloppy directions or reckless directions it will be. So again, I'm just saying it's a, the theme here is just that our, our language really sucks. Uh, it's not something I really realized until recently, just how bad it really is. Everything has such a, a prejudice and a taint built into it. Uh, it's got all this this pro-life uh, 
pro-individual, pro-selfish, pro, pro uh, all these negative things, uh, these negative attributes of our existence have been pro arised by language because the language has chosen to create uh, you know, a false understanding of what really is creating the space. Uh, the negatives are creating what we're um, uh, calling the positives. Um, yeah, the negatives own the territory. They're the ones, they're the thing with the pigment and the, the weight. They're the real paint on the canvas. And instead, the human race has chosen to find the little white bits of canvas and call that the art. And uh, so they've got it backwards. Uh, the construct, they have it inverted because they're seeking uh, rationalizations and justifications for themselves rather than the truth. I've got my can of spray paint. Well, let's get some. And the car I have to work on isn't here. <laughs> Damn. Anyway, until next time. And such and so forth. And whatnot. Yes. It's a lovely sunny day, but not quite as warm. Well, it's getting there.